The story of modern China is a complex and multifaceted narrative woven from the threads of political leadership, military conspiracies, and diplomatic maneuvers. In the early 20th century, China was a nation in turmoil, grappling with internal strife and external threats. Amid this chaos, several key figures emerged, each leaving a profound impact on the country's trajectory. Chiang Kai-shek, a military leader trained in Japan, rose to prominence as the head of the Nationalist Party, also known as the Kuomintang. Embracing Sun Yat-sen's three people's principles, he sought to unify China under a central government. Serving as chairman of the national government from 1931 to 1943 and later as president until his death in 1975, Chiang's tenure was marked by his relentless efforts to combat both internal dissent and external aggression. Opposing Chiang was Mao Zedong, the founding leader of the People's Republic of China and the chairman of the Chinese Communist Party from 1949 until his death in 1976. Mao's political philosophy, known as Maoism, emphasized the impact of class struggle and mass societal mobilization. His leadership during the Long March, a grueling 6,000-mile retreat, solidified his position within the CCP and demonstrated the resilience of his followers. Mao's vision for China was radically different from that of Chiang, focusing on the empowerment of the peasantry and the establishment of a socialist state. Another significant figure was Wang Jingwei, a prominent member of the Kuomintang who later became a rival to Chiang. During World War II, Wang formed a collaborationist government with Japan, known as the Reorganized National Government of China. His actions during this period remain controversial as he sought to navigate the treacherous waters of foreign occupation and internal conflict. Zhou Enlai, serving as premier of the People's Republic from 1949 until his death in 1976, was known for his diplomatic acumen. He played a crucial role during the Chinese Civil War and the Cultural Revolution, often acting as a stabilizing force amid the chaos. Zhou's ability to navigate the complex political landscape of the time was instrumental in maintaining the CCP's grip on power. Deng Xiaoping, a leading reformist within the CCP, emerged as a key figure in the later stages of the Chinese Civil War. His pragmatic approach to governance and economic policy marked a significant departure from Mao's ideology. Deng's efforts to negotiate a ceasefire with Chiang and his subsequent leadership in the 1970s and 1980s laid the groundwork for China's economic transformation. The military campaigns and tactics employed during this period were pivotal in shaping the nation's future. The Kuomintang's encirclement plan against the CCP from 1926 to 1937 aimed to suppress communist influence in rural areas. These attacks were a series of five major offensives launched by the nationalist government to eradicate the Chinese Soviet Republic. Despite their efforts, the Kuomintang faced significant challenges due to the effective use of guerrilla tactics from the CCP. Some, such as the mobile defense strategy, proved highly effective in countering these efforts. Mao and Zhu developed strategies that emphasized flexibility, mobility, and the support of the local peasantry. These maneuvers allowed the Red Army to evade larger nationalist forces and launch surprise attacks, ultimately preserving their strength and resources. The Long March, led by Mao and Zhou Enlai, was a defining moment in the CCP's history. This arduous journey spanned over 6,000 miles from Jiangxi to Shanxi, not only demonstrated the resilience of the Red Army but also helped consolidate Mao's leadership. Beginning with approximately 86,000 troops, but only around 8,000 survived the grueling trek. The Long March solidified Mao's position as the undisputed leader of the CCP and inspired many to join the communist cause. The Second Sino-Japanese War, from 1937 to 1945, saw both the nationalists and communists temporarily set aside their differences to combat Japanese aggression. This conflict weakened both sides, but allowed the CCP to expand its influence in rural areas. The war began with the Marco Polo Bridge incident and included significant battles such as the Battle of Shanghai and the Nanjing Massacre. The CCP used the war to build its base areas and strengthen its military capabilities, ultimately emerging as a more formidable force by the end of the conflict. The Huai Hai Campaign in 1948 saw the People's Liberation Army achieve a significant victory over nationalist forces, effectively ending resistance in eastern China. 
This campaign involved over 1 million troops and resulted in the capture of approximately 550,000 nationalist soldiers. The victory at Huaihai was a turning point, leading to the eventual collapse of nationalist control in the region. The Liaoshen Campaign, also in 1948, resulted in the PLA capturing key cities in northeastern China. This campaign lasting 52 days saw the PLA encircle and capture major cities such as Jinzhou, Changchun, and Shenyang. The success of the Liaoshen Campaign gave the CCP control over Manchuria and significantly weakened the nationalist forces. The Pingjin Campaign from 1948 to 1949 led to the capture of Beijing and Tianjin, isolating the nationalist government in Chongqing. This campaign marked the end of nationalist dominance in northern China and paved the way for the CCP's eventual victory. The capture of these key cities demonstrated the PLA's growing strength and strategic prowess. The Battle of Nanjing in 1949 marked the final major confrontation, forcing Chiang to flee to Taiwan. The People's Liberation Army launched the Yangtze River Crossing Campaign, successfully capturing Nanjing and other key areas along the Yangtze River. This decisive victory led to the fall of the nationalist government. The soft ending of the Chinese Civil War in 1949 saw the establishment of the People's Republic of China, known as the PRC, on the mainland, while the nationalist government retreated to the island, forming the Republic of China, also known as the Government of Taiwan. This division led to decades of cold hostilities between the two governments, with both sides claiming to be the legitimate government of China. In the decades that followed, the Taiwan Strait remained a flashpoint for potential conflict. The first of these many crises in 1954-55 saw the PRC's People's Liberation Army launching artillery bombardments on the Taiwan-controlled islands of Kamoi and Matsu. This aggressive move was aimed at testing the resolve of the ROC and its ally, the United States. The U.S. responded by deploying its 7th Fleet to the Taiwan Strait, signaling its commitment to defend the island. The crisis eventually de-escalated, but it set the stage for future confrontations. The second crisis in 1958 was marked by even more intense shelling of Kemoi and Matsu. The PLA's artillery barrages were met with fierce resistance from the ROC forces, who were bolstered by American military aid and advisors. The U.S. once again played a crucial role in deterring further escalation by providing Taiwan with advanced weaponry and logistics. The crisis highlighted the strategic importance of the Taiwan Strait and the potential for conflict between the superpowers. The third crisis in the Strait was from 1995 to 96. This was triggered by a series of missile tests conducted by the PRC near Taiwan. These tests were intended to intimidate the Taiwanese government and influence the outcome of their first democratic presidential election. The United States responded by sending two more battle groups, further demonstrating its commitment to Taiwan's security. The crisis underscored the volatile nature of cross-country relations and the potential for military confrontation. The fourth crisis, in 2007 involved, China conducting the largest military exercises to date and increased its naval presence in the strait, while the ROC responded by enhancing its defense capabilities. It served as a reminder of the ongoing tensions and the ever-present risk of conflict in the region. Since the fourth, tensions in the strait have continued to simmer. In 2016, Tsai Ing-wen's election as Taiwan's president marked a significant shift, with her administration's pro-independent stance leading to increased friction with Beijing. The PRC responded by ramping up military activities around the island, including frequent air and naval exercises. By 2020, these activities escalated to large-scale military drills directly simulating an invasion, a stark response to growing U.S.-Taiwan relations, including arms sales and high-level diplomatic visits. The situation further intensified in 2021 when the PRC sent a record number of military aircraft into Taiwan's air defense identification zone, signaling Beijing's displeasure with Taiwan's increasing international presence and closer ties with the United States. The PRC's response included more aggressive military posturing, such as even larger live fire exercises and naval patrols in the strait. As of 2024, the situation remains a highly volatile region. The PRC continues to assert its claim over Taiwan, while the ROC, backed by the United States and its allies, maintains its stance on sovereignty and independence. Only time will tell where this conflict ends, or when it ends.
as China shows no signs of backing down and the defense of Taiwan to counter the CCP is a significant driver in the upcoming American elections in 2024,